is Abe Freetanzer from cinemadailyrest.com. How are you today, Justice? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's great to be able to speak with you. Likewise. Um, can you tell me, how did you first hear about this project and what appealed to you about it? Um, I was sent the script and I just was captivated from page one. I agreed to do the movie after page 40. Uh, and then I finished the script and I was very happy that I took that leap and <laughs> agreed to do the film because it was incredible. Michael wrote an amazing story and and, and then I met with him uh, over Zoom for FaceTime at the time, I think, or Skype or something like that. It was before COVID. Um, and he was, uh, he was very kind and he had such great ideas about the story and he uh, knew what it was that he was creating, and I just knew that I was in safe hands and, and that I had to do it. That's great. And what it appealed to you specifically about the character of Thomas? I thought Thomas was this personification of this idea of not being enough. Um, I feel like that's something that we struggle with as a society where we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. You know, we feel like if we don't buy a certain product, we're not enough. Or if we don't have a certain relationship, we're not enough. Or we don't have that house or that family or the yada, 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 you know? And, and, and uh, Thomas is, 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 you know, the, 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 the entity of that, you know, like he suffers from all these different insecurities and, and they're not uncommon. Um, so I feel like he's, he's incredibly relatable. Yeah, definitely. What did you find uh, most challenging to relate to about him? Uh, he's a musician, and so I had to learn how to play the bass, and that was hard to do. Gotcha. And have you ever been involved in any sort of situation like this where you either could see something or you knew about something you weren't supposed to? And what did you do in that situation? Uh, have I ever been in a situation like this? Not really. I mean, I feel like we're in situations like this all the time. It's just um, in a different way. It's, you know, it's social media. It's having windows into everybody's lives 24 seven. You know, I, that feels incredibly invasive. You know, I've, I know I've had to have, I've had to create some boundaries around how much I reveal about myself on social media and who I follow and what I'm, what I'm consuming on a daily basis. Um, and I think this film is kind of an allegory for that. Yeah. Do you think it's become increasingly relatable uh, being released during the pandemic because people are so isolated and often yeah. seeing each other from afar? Yeah, I guess it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can you say about working with uh, Sydney Sweeney? Oh, she's great. The minute we met, she we got along, you know, she was really down to earth and um i was such a fan of hers from everything sucks uh and then i watched her in euphoria and i was just like oh wow this girl is incredible and so uh i was i was pleasantly surprised to well not surprised i was uh happy to to meet her and see how amazing uh she was as a person as well as an actor um uh, yeah, and then our, you know, uh, Michael gave us so much freedom to improvise and play on set. So uh, our like dynamic was really natural, and and you know all that, all the joking and the and the laughing that you see on screen was just me and Sid exploring our friendship. Uh, yeah, it's cool. That's great. And you don't get to interact quite as much with Ben and Natasha's characters. And obviously we don't want to give too much away, but what was it like working with the two of them? Yeah. Again, I didn't really work with them too much, but we did, we did go to cast dinners and stuff and, and they're both great. I, I did a couple of interviews with Ben earlier today and that was like the most I'd ever talked to him. I was like, Oh, this guy's awesome. I wish I had known, <laughs> but uh, Natasha and I, we hit it off uh, and uh, at a couple of dinners and, um had a, like a lot to say we're both uh biracial and so we talked a lot about being biracial <laughs> great and i actually did just talk to ben a few minutes ago and he said he wished he had worked with you more so yeah uh, same good, uh, mutual feeling yeah um i've fun. enjoyed yeah um before this i enjoyed watching you a lot on generation and i feel like chester is somebody who would be so much more into this situation than thomas <laughs> you think that's true? uh 
Uh, that's very interesting. Um, I think Chester, ironically enough, Chester's equally as obsessed with love and like being in a relationship. Um, so yeah. I wonder if he would feel threatened by the idea of uh, watching or being coming obsessed with the people next door. They, I think Chester and Thomas actually have more in common than you think. Interesting. Can you say more about that? Uh, in that Thomas is incredibly, you know, monogamous and traditional and is ready to settle down and and wants to embark on this this milestone towards adulthood and and chester is a, a teenager obviously uh, but romanticizes this idea of love and relationship and i think he would love nothing less than to settle down with the one you know with someone that he deems his best friend someone that he has a, a an amazing rapport with and uh so I, I would be curious to see if Chester would be threatened by um, uh, his partner uh, becoming disinterested in him and, and looking for stimulus elsewhere. Interesting. I really like that interpretation. Um, do you know if there will be, if we will see more of Chester, if Generation Season 2 is, is going to be a thing? I hope so. You should make a petition. <laughs> You should make a petition and tell HBO Max to renew generation. Oh, that sounds great. Do you have any other projects that are coming up besides this one? I just finished, I just wrapped Dungeons and Dragons, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm about to go shoot Sharper, which is this movie for A24 with uh, Julianne Moore and Sebastian Stan. I'm really excited for that. Uh, ben Karen is directing. Um, yeah, uh, I'm... I'm I'm happy with my life. <laughs> That's great. Is there anything that you haven't tried yet that you would like to uh, give a thought sometime in the near future? Uh, ayahuasca. Okay. <laughs> um, in terms of career, you mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I would love to do like uh, some Shakespeare would be fun. Um. I would love to do, uh, I would love to play a villain. I've never really gotten to play a villain before. Um, so I'd love to do that. Um, yeah. That's great. Well, I really appreciate you speaking with me today. And uh, let's hopefully we'll talk sometime soon about more generations. All right. I'm, I'm holding you to it. <laughs>